Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So in this video I will attempt to answer the question on which investment strategy is better, a lump sum investment strategy or a dollar cost averaging investment strategy. So I'm currently on Google's website, it's called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it really easy to start programming in Python. So all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. All right, so to get started writing this code, go ahead and click on File, then click on New Notebook, where a new tab will open up for you, and then eventually a new cell. And in this cell, I'm going to put in some comments. I'm going to put in a description about the program. So I'm just going to put dollar cost average versus lump sum. Okay. Also, you can get the code and data set that I will be using throughout this video on Patreon at patreon.com slash computer science. And I should also say that the material in this video is purely educational and should not be taken as professional investment advice as I am not a financial advisor. So please do your own research before making any sort of investment. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. Let's go ahead and create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left. And in this cell, I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout the program. So I'm going to import NumPy as MP. I'm going to import pandas as pd, and I'm going to import matplotlive.pyplot as plt, and then I'm going to give the plot a style. So I'm going to type plt.style.use, and I'm going to use 538 style. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and run this cell by clicking this button here to the left, and this will let me know if I made any mistakes. Okay? and it looks like we're good. So CNBC wrote an article claiming that lump sum investing beat dollar cost averaging 75% of the time for a 100% stock portfolio. And we're gonna use some Python programming to test this. So that's exactly what we're about to do here. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is load some data. So the data set that I'm going to be loading contains information on the SPDR, S&P 500 Trust, which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. So in order to do this, because I'm on Google's website, I have to use Google's library to upload this data. So from google.colab, I'm going to import files, and I'm just gonna type files.upload, and then run this cell, and then click on choose files, and I'm gonna choose this spy.csv file, okay? So now it's done loading up. I'm going to go ahead and create a new cell. And I'm going to now read in that data. So here we're going to read in the data. So I'm going to create a variable called asset. And I'm going to set it equal to pd.read underscore csv. And I'm going to put in the name of the file that was just uploaded, which is spy.csv. OK, and then I want to show the data. So I'm just going to type asset here. And let's run this cell. Okay, so now we can see the data set. We can see that this data set contains 2,517 rows of data and seven columns. Okay, and it looks like it has information from February 10th, 2012, all the way to February 9th, 2022. All right, and then we can see the seven columns. That's the date column, the open column, the high column, the low column, the close column, the adjusted close column, and then the volume. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to change these indices here to reflect the date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the date as the index. So I'm just going to set asset equal to asset dot set underscore index and then put in pd dot date time index and inside of here we're going to put in asset date dot values okay so let's run this cell again and now we can see that the indices have changed to reflect the date okay so that looks good all right let's create a new cell and now in this cell I want to visually show the data more specifically, I want to show and plot the historical adjusted close price data. So let me put visually show the adjusted close price 
historical data. All right. OK, so to do this, just type asset and then put adjusted close price or ADJ close dot plot and then give this a figure size. So set fix size equal to 16 by 8 and then we can just run this. All right, and now we have our nice plot. But let's go ahead and add some more information uh, just to make it a little bit better, right? So let's give this a title. So type lt.title and I'm going to put asset historical adjusted close price so that we know what we're looking at. And then I'm going to give the x axis a label. So just type lt.x label and I'm going to put date so we know what's on the x axis. And let's go ahead and give the y axis a label as well so we know what we're looking at on the y axis. So just type plt.y label and then put adj dot close price and this is in United States dollars so I'm just going to put USD here and let's run this again and so now we have a little bit more information on our chart so we can uh, more, we can understand this a little bit better now. Alright so let's go ahead and create a new cell and now in this cell I want to calculate and show the lump sum investment strategy okay so what I plan on doing is I plan on showing a hypothetical five thousand dollars spent on any given day within this data set in the past all right and seeing how much I would have given the last price within this data set and so if that didn't make sense it will in a minute hopefully okay so let's go ahead and let's get the adjusted close prices from the data set so I'm going to create a variable called adjusted or adj underscore close underscore prices and I'm going to set this equal to asset adjusted close alright so that should give us all of the adjusted close prices within the data set. Okay, so we have that. Next, let's go ahead and choose the initial investment amount. So I said we will be using a hypothetical $5,000. So first I'm gonna create a variable called initial underscore investment. And I wanna set this equal to 5,000 because I said that it will be uh, a hypothetical $5,000. And let me make sure I spell initial correctly. I N I T I A L. Okay. So that looks good. Next, let's go ahead and get the latest or last price value of the ETF. Well, I'll put stock slash ETF within this data set. So this is what I was saying earlier. We're going to base this lump sum investment off the current price and in this case the current price is the the last price within this data set which is February 9th 2022. More specifically it's the last adjusted close price within this data set. So we're going to be getting this price right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and get that information. So to do that, first I'm going to create a variable called stock underscore latest underscore value. And I want to set this equal to the adjusted close prices. And I want only that last row of data. So the index will be negative one. So that's the last row. And now we got that value that I highlighted a little bit earlier. Okay, so that looks good. Next, I want to get the number of shares bought on each date with the hypothetical 
investment amount, which is the lump sum, right? So I'm going to put AKA lump sum. Okay, so I'm going to create a variable called num underscore shares underscore bought to get the number of shares bought. And I'm going to set it equal to the initial investment divided by the adjusted close prices. All right, so now that will give me the number of shares bought for each day or date. Okay, so now with all this information, I can calculate I can calculate how much money I or you would have according to the last price in this data set for investing a lump sum on a given date in the past. All right, so that's a lot, but I think that's good. So let's go ahead and create a variable called lump underscore sum. And actually, because I can't see all of that, I'm just going to bring it down a little bit and put some comments there so that way we can see it all on the screen, the comments that I just now wrote. Okay, so I'm going to create a variable called lump underscore sum. And I'm going to set this equal to the stock latest value. And I'm going to multiply that times the number of shares. So num shares bought. And that will give me lump sum. So let's go ahead and show the data. And let's run this. Okay. So what this data is, is showing is that if I had invested $5,000 on February 10th, 2012, then as of February 9th, 2022, my investment would be worth $20,620 and about 84 cents. Okay. And if I had invested $5,000 on February 9th, 2022, then on February 9th, 2022, my total amount would be $5,000. All right, so hopefully that's understandable. Um, obviously, this isn't showing every single row in our data, uh, in our data set, but it's showing a little bit, it's showing a, a small sample. So let's go ahead and let's show which day would have been best for a lump sum investment and which day would have been the worst for a lump sum investment. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And here I'm going to compute and show the best and worst days or worst the best and worst day for a lump sum investment. Okay? So first I'm going to put a little print statement and I'm just going to put lump sum investments and put a little colon there all right and let's print the best day to invest a uh, $5,000 investment so I'm just going to add the initial underscore investment amount I need to cast it as a string so I'm going to put str. I want to surround it with str here. So we're casting it as a string. All right, so the best day to invest a $5,000 lump sum was on some day. So let's get that day. That would be lump dot or lump underscore sum dot index max or IDX max the maximum index okay so at lump sum dot IDX max uh, dot string format str f time and then I want to format this to to have the to have the month so I want the, oh, I need to put this in single quotes. And I want the month name. 
okay so I'm gonna put percent D there and then I want the day so percent D and then I want the full year so I'm gonna put percent capital Y alright so let's go ahead and just run this just to make sure I'm doing everything properly alright so the best day to invest a five thousand dollar lump sum was on June 4th 2012 okay so that looks pretty good so far all right, so what would that amount be? So here I'm going to put an would would be worth some dollar amount here. So let's go ahead and get that dollar amount. So that will be the lump underscore sum dot max. And I need to cast this as a string. So I'm just going to surround it with str. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and round this this lump sum. So just type round, and then left parentheses, and right parentheses, and I'm going to round it to two decimal places. So I'm going to put two there. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. All right, so the best day to invest a five thousand dollar lump sum was on June fourth, two thousand twelve, and would be worth $21,534.16. All right, so it would be worth that much on what day? So here I'm going to put it would be worth that much on the last day of this data set, right? Or the last date of this data set. So just put lump underscore sum dot last underscore valid underscore index dot str f time and then percent b percent d percent y okay and let's run this all right so the best day to invest a five thousand dollar lump sum was on june 4th 2012 and will be worth twenty one thousand five hundred thirty four dollars and about 16 cents on february 9th 2022 that's not bad for a five thousand dollar investment and that's in about in about uh, 10 years right so from 2012 to 2022 your lump sum investment would be worth about four times as much or a little more than four times as much so that's not bad okay so I want to do the same thing but for the worst day so I'm just gonna highlight all of this I'm gonna copy using control C and then I'm gonna come down here and paste it using control V and I'm gonna change just a few things so instead of the best day I'm gonna put the worst day to invest uh, it will be the same initial investment amount and this will be lump sum dot IDX min alright and the string format is fine and it would be worth the minimum amount here so we're just going to change that max to min and I think everything else is fine so let's go ahead and run this okay so now we can see that the worst day to invest a $5,000 lump sum was on January 3rd 2022 and would be worth $4,788.89 on February 9th, 2022. Okay, so you would have lost some money, right? Had you invested $5,000 on January 3rd, 2022, you would have lost money uh, by February 9th, 2022. Okay, so I think that's pretty neat. I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. And, and what I think is neat is that your, uh, your $5,000 investment grew basically four times as much within 10 years that's pretty neat all right so let's go ahead and plot this right let's plot that data so we're going to plot the lump sum data all right to do this i'm just going to type lump underscore sum dot plot and let's give our figure a figure size let's set it equal to 16 by 8 and then let's give this a title so just type guilty.title 
and I'm just going to put lump sum investment on a given date based on the last price and I put the dollar amount as well so let's just put str uh, investment uh, initial investment there we go let's add that put a little space right here oh, right here and let's put a little dollar sign at the beginning okay alright and then let's give the x-axis a label so plt dot x label and it will be the date and then let's give the y-axis a label so plt dot y label and it will be the investment value in USD and let's run this okay so now we're looking at a chart for a $5,000 lump sum investment on a given date based on the last price within this data set so here we can see is where that max date would be right the best date to invest that $5,000 lump sum amount and basically what you can see is this chart is showing the earlier that you invested the better right the better the better return you would have as of was it February February 9th 2022 so that's pretty cool alrighty so let's go ahead and create a new cell now that we're done with the lump sum investment strategy and we can see those returns let's go ahead and take a look at the dollar cost averaging investment strategy so we want to create a function to calculate the dollar cost averaging strategy okay so I'm gonna call this function DCA for dollar cost average and it's gonna take in some start date so that's the day that where we're going to start dollar cost averaging and it's gonna take in some initial investment that's the total amount that we plan on investing uh, for some time period okay all right so first let's go ahead and get the investment periods so that's how many times we want to invest right um, get the investment periods so I'm gonna choose the investment periods to be 12 because there are 12 months in a year right so investment underscore date underscore periods is going to be equal to 12.0 all right next I want to calculate the portion or amount that we plan on or that we plan to invest for each investment date period so basically we're just going to try to invest an equal amount at each of these investment date periods so let's create a variable called investment underscore portion and let's set this equal to the initial underscore investment divided by the investment date periods okay so for example if I have an initial uh, an initial investment amount of let's say twelve thousand dollars then the investment portion will be twelve thousand divided by twelve okay so it would be one thousand dollars for each investment por uh, portion all right so again that would be one thousand dollars for each investment portion given that the initial investment amount is twelve thousand dollars and the investment date periods are 12 all right okay so next I want to go ahead and get the dates of the investment 
periods. So I will get um, these. I will invest every 30 days starting from the start date. So that's approximately a month, but not every month has 30 days. So it's going to be off a little bit, but that's okay. So let's create a variable called all underscore in investment underscore dates. And we're going to handle it being off a little bit as well. We're going to handle that. So don't worry about that. So all investment dates will be equal to PD dot um, date range, date underscore range from the start date and the number of periods will be equal to 12.0. That's the investment underscore date underscore periods. And the frequency FREQ will be equal to 30 days. Okay? So every 30 days for 12 periods, we will be investing a specific investment portion. All right, so far so good. Now, what I want to do is I want to get, I want to get the dates up to the last date in our data set. Okay, so let's get those dates. So I'm gonna create a variable called investment underscore dates and I want to set this equal to all underscore investment underscore dates where all underscore investment underscore dates are less than the last date in our data set so that's asset dot index at position negative one right because the the indices are the date values. Okay. Alrighty. So I think that looks good. And let's go ahead and get the indices and in turn the dates within the data set that are the closest to the investment dates. Okay, so this will allow us to get the price of the stock or ETF at the date that is closest to the investment date period. And we need to do this because the market isn't open 24 seven. So those investment dates that we uh, calculated before, so the investment dates that we have here, aren't necessarily dates where the market was open, right? So we need to find the closest date to those days, and that's what we're about to do here. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit, just so we have everything on screen. All right, so let's create a variable called closest underscore investment underscore dates and set it's equal to asset dot index dot search sorted investment underscore dates. Okay. All right, so that's good. Now we have that information. Next, we're going to get a list of stock prices at the closest investment date. So we have the the closest investment dates, or we, we at least know where they're at now, right? So we know where the closest investment dates are. And now we're going to get a list of stock prices at that closest investment date. So stock underscore prices equals 
asset adjusted close at those dates so that's going to be at closest underscore investment dates all right and just like that we know the price of this ETF at those dates so just like that okay so now I want to get the total number of shares that we invested in or invested from uh, we're gonna get the total number of shares that we invested in uh, like yeah, invested in by summing all of the shares purchased on each of the investment dates okay I'm gonna bring that down here as well okay so to do that I'm gonna create a variable called total underscore shares underscore invested now I'm gonna set this equal to sum and it's gonna be the sum of the investment portion divided by the stock prices oh, stock prices okay and did I misspell investment portion uh, let's just nope it looks like everything's good there okay alrighty so now that will give us the total shares that we have invested so next we need to handle any uninvested cash right so we're going to get the total number or we're going to get let's see we're just going to get the cash that was not invested from the initial investment amount all right so let's create a variable called uninvested cash and let's set this equal to the investment portion times the sum of all of the investment dates that are greater than or equal to the asset dot index at position negative one. Okay, so I think that'll do it. Let's see, we're missing anything else. I don't think so. So let's go ahead and calculate and return the total value of the shares uh, based on the last price value in this data set after the investment periods, starting from the start date. So we're just going to I'm just going to put calculate the total. So I'm going to create a variable called total, and I'm going to set this equal to uninvested cash plus our invested cash right so that's plus the asset adjusted close price at position negative one that's the most recent price within this data set times the total shares invested okay and then I want to return total okay so that was that was a lot and let's see everything looks good here all right I think everything's good definitely you know check check me so let's go ahead and run this cell and let's create a new cell alright so now in this cell I plan on executing that DCA function that we just created so here I'm just gonna put execute the DCA function so I also want to store the total values in a list so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a 
DCA underscore list. I'm gonna set this equal to an empty list for now. And now let's loop through our function. So for uh, we're gonna really loop through our data set and we're gonna input the start date into our function. Right? So for a date in for a date in our asset dot index. Okay, asset dot index. I want to run our function DCA. I want to input the start date and I want to input our initial investment. Okay? And so this this will return the total. And then I want to append this to our list. So I'm just going to type DCA underscore list dot append. Okay. And now let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new cell now that that is done. And in this cell, I want to convert the list to, well, a series, right? So I'm sure there's going to be an easier way than what I'm about to do, but this is what I plan on doing for this. I'm going to first create a new data frame. So I want to create a variable called DCA, set it equal to PD dot data frame. Okay. And then I'm going to give this data frame a column named DCA. And I'm going to set that equal to the DCA list that we created in the cell above. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and set the date as the index. So I'm just going to set DCA equal to DCA dot set underscore index and then put in PD dot date time index and then put in asset dot index. Okay, so let me bring this up a little bit. And now I want to convert the data frame to a series. And that's easy enough by setting the DCA equal to DCA dot squeeze. And then I'm going to show the data. So I'm just going to type DCA here and let's run this. Okay. So there we go. Now we have this nice series, right? And we can see that if we started dollar cost averaging for 12 periods on February 10th, 2012. And again, we're dollar cost averaging that $5,000 investment for 12 periods. Then by the end of this data set, which is February 9th, 2022, we would have $19,732 and about 50 cents. Okay? So that's not... Um, that's not bad, right? That's pretty good. That's still almost four times uh, your investment amount, but it looks like lump summing would have been better to do on that date than dollar cost averaging. All right, so let's go ahead and let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, I want to compute and show what day would have been best and worst for dollar cost averaging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here where we did that before. I'm just going to highlight all of this. Let's just do control A and then control C to copy it and then come back down here. And I'm going to use control V to paste it. All right. So now we're going to compute and show the best and worst day for a dollar cost average investment. Okay. So I'm going to put DCA here and the best day to dollar cost so I should put the best day to I'm gonna put the best day to start 
dollar cost averaging a something investment was on uh, a blah, blah blah investment was on DCA dot IDX max and we keep that string format the same and would be worth okay uh, it would be worth DCA dot max on DCA dot last valid index okay and now I'm just going to highlight all of this here copies control C then come here and paste it over the the bottom statement using control V and change a few things so now instead of the best day I'm going to do the worst day and instead of IDX max here we're going to put min okay and instead of max here we're going to put min and I think that should do it so let's go ahead and run this oh looks like we have a little problem let's see let me just go on over here and let's see so I have um, plus uh, DCA dot last valid index let's see what the error is IDX max is the problem so where do we have IDX max um, right here so let's see DCA dot IDX max okay so it looks like the problem is that DCA is not a series so let's go back up here and right here where I wanted to convert it to be a series it looks like I messed up a little bit need to put the left parentheses and right parentheses let's run this again let's go down here let's run this again and there we go okay so DCA investments the best day to start DCA a I'm definitely going to change this a little bit I'll put the best day to start uh, dollar well okay so the best day to start dollar cost averaging maybe I put an ING here ING and an ING so the best day to start DCAing a $5,000 investment was on February 13 2012 and would be worth about $19,789.45 on February 9th, 2022. And the worst day to start dollar cost averaging a $5,000 investment was on November 12th, 2021, and would be worth $4,975.30 on February 9th, 2022. So it seems like dollar cost averaging would not have given you a higher value than a lump sum investment but also it seems like it wouldn't have given you as low of a value as lump sum investing. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. All right, and now in this cell, I'm just going to plot DCA. So just type DCA dot plot, give the figure a figure size equal to, equal to 16 by eight. All right, let's give this a title. So PLT.title, I'm just gonna put DCA for now. And then let's give the x-axis a label. So just type x label. And it will be date. Let's give the y-axis a label. So PLT.y label. It will be investment value in USD. And let's run this, okay? So we can see that this graph is a lot smoother, which may mean that dollar cost averaging is less volatile than a lump sum investment, which is here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna highlight it and copy it using control C, then come down here and paste it for the title here using control V 
and instead of lump sum we're going to put DCA just to keep it consistent okay so there we go so again this is a lot smoother than the lump sum investment up top here all right so if you can't stand those wild rides when investing then dollar cost averaging may be a good option for you but let's see which one is more volatile so here we're going to get the volatility all right so I'm going to create a variable called lump sum vol I'm going to set this equal to lump underscore sum dot percentage percentage underscore change dot standard deviation and let's create another variable called DCA underscore vol set it equal to DCA dot percentage underscore change dot standard deviation and then let's show the volatility so lump sum volatility volatility and that's going to be lump sum and I put call it's going to be lump sum vol with a V I don't know why I put a C for both of them just mistyping okay and now let's put another print statement here and let's put lump sum I'm oh, sorry DCA volatility all right so that's DCA underscore vol let's go ahead and run this now okay and we can see that indeed lump summing a lump sum investment strategy is definitely more volatile than a dollar cost averaging um, strategy okay so let's create a new cell and let's finally figure out which one is the better investment strategy okay so in order to do this I need to get the difference between the two so I'm going to create a variable called difference and I'll set it equal to DCA minus lump underscore sum and then I'm going to plot the difference so I'm just going to type difference dot plot give it a figure size equal to 16 by 8 and set the label equal to difference okay and then I'm going to type plt dot fill between and we're going to put in difference dot index for the x-axis and we're going to set y1 equal to difference and we're going to set y2 equal to zero where they would be equal all right here I'm going to put a color equal to green and this will be where the difference is greater than zero so this tells me that the dollar cost averaging uh, return return more than than lump sum all right so I'm gonna set the label equal to DCA greater than lump sum now of course if it's the opposite then that tells me that lump sum beat dollar cost averaging so it returned more all right so let me just go ahead and highlight this copies control C and then I'm going to go down one and paste it using control V and change just a few things so I'm gonna keep everything the same almost except for I'm gonna change the color to red here and here I'm going to change the inequality so now difference is less than zero and I'm gonna change the inequality here as well so DCA is less than lump sum all right so next I'm gonna put a title so plt dot title I'm gonna put difference DCA minus lump sum okay all right and then let's show the legend so type plt dot legend and let's run this okay so we can see that dollar cost averaging beat lump summing 
uh, this many times here in the green, here again in the green, here again in the green, and then there's a little bit of green here as well. And it looks like there may be a little bit of green here, right? But overall, we can see a lot of red. And that tells us that lump sum definitely beat dollar cost averaging for at least this time range for the S&P 500. Okay, so I'm actually curious by how much did it beat it? You know, what's the win percentage for both of these? So let's go ahead and create a new cell and let's calculate that. So we're going to calculate the win percentages. Okay, so I'm going to create a variable called lump underscore sum underscore win underscore percentage. I have to get better with naming my variables. And let's set this equal to the sum of the difference less than zero divided by the length of difference. And I want this to be a percentage, so I'm going to multiply it times 100. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and round this as well. So I'm going to round all of this to one decimal place. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to copy using Control C, and then come down here and paste it using Control V. And let's get the DCA win percentage. We're just going to change the inequality here, and that should do it. So. Let's go ahead and create some print statements. So I'm going to put dollar cost averaging return more than lump sum. And then we'll put that percentage here. So I'm just going to put string uh, DCA underscore win underscore percentage. And let's just copy all of this using control C after highlighting it and then come down here, paste it, use control V and change this to DCA. Get rid of these B's on then. And I don't know why I put DCA here. It should be lump underscore sum. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to put a little space here, space here. I'm going to add a percentage. So we know that this is percentage. And I'm going to put up the time. And I will do the same thing for the statement below. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it. And let's run this again. So now dollar cost averaging returned more than lump sum 87.1% of the time. Uh, let me change this as well. One more thing. So this should not be dollar cost averaging. This should be lump sum, right? So lump sum investment strategy return more than, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, lump sum investment strategy return more than dollar cost averaging. That's why I had that there before. Uh, 87% of the time and the dollar cost averaging return more than lump sum that percent of the time. So let's run this again. Okay, so lump sum investment strategy returned more than dollar cost averaging 87.1% of the time and dollar cost averaging returned more than lump sum 12.9% of the time. Okay? Alrighty, so that's basically it. As we can see uh, it may be best to to do a lump sum investment, right? Because you have like an eighty-seven point one percent chance of uh, of a better return than if you would have went with the dollar cost averaging trading strategy. I'm sorry, the dollar cost averaging investment strategy. Well, that's the end of the video. I apologize for all the mistakes, but to start an investment portfolio of your own. You can click on the link below and get two free stocks on Weeble when you deposit $100 or more. And don't forget to grab $10 worth of Bitcoin using the BlockFi link below when you deposit $100 or more. It's basically free money. Thanks for watching and thank you to the supporters supporting this channel on patreon.com slash computer science. If you would like to be a supporter on patreon.com slash computer science, 
or again just get the code and data set used in this video then I will leave a link in the description below for that as well thanks again for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video